Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Oh, that's right. This is a special episode. Shh. Today, we're going to talk about the secrets and the backstage confessions of a YouTube creator. Are you ready, guys? A very special episode. Let's go. Okay, guys, this is a special episode, which I'm sure a lot of you are going to be interested in. We're not going to talk about audio. We're going to talk about YouTube, the secrets, the issues, the problems, the cool things, because I'm sure that a lot of you are eager to know how this works. And I also think it's honest from, um, from my side as a creator to share with you what happens, what takes place behind the video camera, what takes place as a creator in the YouTube world. Are you ready? Let's start right after this. Okay, I want to start out with my journey, my personal journey, okay? Then we're going to take a look at monetization, affiliation, uh, analytics, uh, membership, copyrights, uh, the key factors and how the mechanisms, the algorithm of YouTube, how it goes up in the stars or down in the pit, things like that. Okay, so my journey. In 2017, I decided to start my channel just to talk about my passion. In this case, analog, mainly analog music, but in general, music reproduction, hi-fi gear, uh, audio file labels, things like that, tape, vinyl. The subscribers already know what I'm talking about. In any case, after a few months that I was doing videos, obviously, nothing was happening. I didn't have any visualizations. Now, I knew that that was something normal. But after uh, three, three and a half months, I was really depressed. I, I was about to shut everything down. I know a lot of people say this. It is true. I was about to shut everything down. My last video was going to be the secrets of hi-fi uh, audio cables, high-end audio cables. And all of a sudden, since I really did not, not, did not have any visualizations, I mean, that's frustrating, as you can imagine. All of a sudden, that video started to boost, guys, a huge amount of visualizations, comments, uh, there are some imprecisions, we could say, in that video. It's not one of my best, but the concept is still valid. You will find a, a link to that video if you want in the video description. And all of a sudden, I felt, yeah, baby, let's get going. This is working. It's finally working. It took a, really a lot of patience and time and obviously good quality content because my videos, in, I, in my opinion, I think did had something to say, which is very, very important. If you're just bab babbling around, you're not going to gain attention since there's so many other channels and great videos out there. Okay. So what happened in my first year? It took more or less one year to gain my first 1000 subscribers. Now, now that's a very important milestone for a YouTube creator. Why? Well, first of all, because that's when YouTube starts to look at you. I mean, if you don't have at least 1,000 subs, you're nothing. In fact, they unlock at that point monetization. Otherwise, you cannot do anything. This was different in the past, obviously. But exactly when I decided to open my channel, things changed and they required a certain amount of watching time, obviously, minutes, but especially 1,000 subs, which is difficult to do in the, in the first period of time. In fact, it took one year to, to reach that point. Then one year and a half from the start, which means just six months after that, I reached 10,000 subs, which is not that much if you consider who has millions. But we're talking about the beginning. So I was very, very pleased and, and flattered by everyone because 
I took one year to get to reach 1,000 and just one year and a half to reach 10,000. At that point, it took another year. So as you can see, things are not homogeneous. It does change. So after two years and a half, I reach 20,000 subs. And after that, in just six months now, as for July 2020, I'm just about to reach 30,000. So just in six months, more or less, that took place. Again, another huge leap. So as you can see, if you do quality content, if you're constant in your production, this does happen. This does take place. I mean, we're not talking about huge numbers also because I'm, my topics are not very popular. I mean, you really have to be in hi-fi. If you're talking about modern politics or funny things or movies or, I don't know, uh, soccer, sports, you're obviously going to go much more quicker than, than, than that. But not, not, not everyone want, wants to talk about that. A lot of people want to talk, as like, like me, about their passions. So that's why sometimes it's going to be a niche. But if you do it correctly, it, you do have some results, hopefully. Okay, so apart from that, I think let's proceed and let's talk about my gear. Maybe some of you are interested. What am I using? I'm mainly using a Sony video camera, a handy cam, a classic handy cam. Uh, in some episodes, I did use my D800 by Nikon, which is much better as lens and as a sensor and everything, but the autofocus isn't that good. So that's why I just decided to use my camera. Plus, uh, sometimes I use a, Le a Levalier type of mic, but that's very rare. I usually use my Blue Yeti Pro microphone which is one of the best, I think, uh, among the most popular, simple microphones. Nothing very professional, but the quality of the voice is amazing. And I use it in analog mode with the XLR cable, not the digital mode. I use a digital converter after that. Where am I recording? I'm recording on a Tascam portable, high quality recorder. I'll put uh, uh, some pictures here about all this gear. And one of the most important things of, for a creator and if you take a look at my first videos, you you think I'm gonna in a cavern shooting, is lightning. That is paramount. I don't have time to set up all my gear. Each time I have to set it up again because I'm in the middle of my of my home. I have kids running around, so I have to do it every time. So I needed something quick. So I just put my camera, put my seat, and put one main light. I turn on all the lights in the room, but I have one main light on top of the camera, which is very extremely powerful LED light. And that's enough, more or less. Be careful of glasses. That is a pain in the ass in order to have the correct lightning. In fact, I always have refle uh, reflex of, of the lights uh, inside my lens. I, it's, it's, you, you really need a two pair of, of lights in order to have high quality. Uh, results but as I said I don't have time unfortunately to set up everything and more or less I would say that's the main for my gear okay so I know a lot of you want to know about monetization let's talk about monetization as I said you need 1k subscribers plus other types of uh, requirements prerequisites that Google asks but that's the main one and big question how much do I earn well Coming from the different uh, ads, as you can see uh, out and about, obviously the result, the, the answer to this question is it depends. It changes every month. Yes, it does. It's not always uh, increasing as someone would think. Nope. It depends from the videos you upload, if, the, if they're popular, if the older ones get shared somehow or they get they go viral or for some reason they go back in the charts because there's some kind of topic that that is interesting in that moment so it depends a lot and obviously you get paid once every uh, month how much is well how much do i, do I earn i more or less it depends as as i said again it depends but I would say we go from 250 to 300 euro per month. Again, it can be much less. It can be a little higher than that in just two or three times it happened. So for now, as for 
uh, July 2020, that's more or less what's happening. Uh, but it'll, it, it, it depends. I mean, it, it can increase greatly if you have much more visualizations. And mainly the key feature is p if people share the video, obviously. Okay, so don't believe Social Blade. Don't believe all these sites where they tell you how much presumably a YouTuber is earning because they're not absolutely not accurate. So every, every site, every channel is a whole world on itself. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, something similar going on on this topic. Affiliations. Now, the main affiliation that most YouTube creators have is Amazon. I don't know if you noticed in my video descriptions and or other YouTube creators, you can find a lot of times small little links to an Amazon product. Now, every time you click on that and you purchase that item or another item, the important is that you pass through that link. A few cents, depends, sometimes even dollars, if you're purchasing something very expensive, goes to uh, the creator. But obviously the, the main majority of the, of the expense goes to Amazon. But it's worth knowing. I, I want to come clean on this. I want to make sure that you understand that if, when you click those links in my videos, I never wrote anything about it because I, maybe I'm too lazy, but I want to I say it now. So at least I've said it once in my channel that if you click, I did say it in the last video though. If you click on these links, a few cents, maybe some dollars, even less, depends, will come to the creator because it recommended an Amazon product. And it can happen for other websites or other uh, commercial-based, uh, I don't know, societies, labels, house, brands, wherever it is. Amazon is one of the easiest and biggest of all. In this respect, I wanted to say something about the whole concept of reviewing products. Now, a lot of times I think some creators are not completely transparent on this and they present some products claiming how good they are without telling you that they are having some benefit from who produces that product. I never, I 100% never done that. Uh, even because every time they, they uh, try to propose something to me, I go online and check. It's always crappy stuff, so I prefer not to do it. Only when really high, high quality stuff is gonna come knocking on my door, I will gladly do a, a, a review. And sometimes, it's true, it's true, 100% true, I swear. Sometimes when I write back to these, because maybe I did find some interest in a few products, and I always say, okay, I will review it, but if I don't like it, I am not gonna review it, one possibility, or you're gonna let me say what's the bad, the cons, the bad side of your product. I don't wanna just say it's cool, but go and buy it. And a lot of people disappear at that point. Obviously, unfortunately, and sadly, I would say. So that's another uh, two cents from me for on reviewing products. Maybe you've noticed connected to this topic that now a lot of channels, you have to have specific requirements satisfied in order to have your own shelf below your channel. I don't know if you've seen, if you're watching now my video, below here you'll see some t-shirts, some gadgets. That is a partnership between Teespring and YouTube. And you can display among more or less, I think, 12 objects that if you click them, go directly on the, uh, the site, on the Teespring site. In fact, I invite you to check my, uh, my gear store. I have very few sales. I don't know why I'm still doing this, but I enjoy doing graphics. Uh, maybe you've noticed all my thumbnails of my videos. I love to do them. I enjoy doing them. I do them all by myself because I, I really like doing graphics. I'm not an expert, but I do like to fiddle around a little bit. So I do. I also like to do some graphics for the t-shirts, the mugs, the stickers, or whatever it is. So, Parenthesis, if you want to get something on the, on the, on the store, from the, on the Anna Dialogue gear store, official store, you can have 10% off if you use Analog 10. This is the promo code. Here it is. Apart from that, I just wanted to signal that 
that is what you're looking at when you're looking at YouTube channels and you see those gadgets there below. Okay, another topic connected to uh, promotion, to monetization, to gadgets is memberships. Uh, recently, YouTube changed a little bit the rules, but now if you reach 30,000K subscribers, you can activate the join button or abbonati in the Italian channel and uh, where you become a member, membership of this, of that specific channel. Usually you have one, two or three, even more if you want, types of subscri subscription which uh, increase in the perks you can have. Uh, and at the same time to the special things you can acquire with that. But it is meant just to somehow uh, sustain, somehow give help, economic help, economic resources to the channel. In fact, they're usually just very, very small donations, very small payments. Remember though that 30%, 30% goes to Google there. In fact, a lot of people activate Patreon where they have more or less the same situation developed in a more fancy way, I would say, with a lot of more features, but you have to go out of YouTube. You have to make an account. I mean, it takes time. While if you're already on YouTube, it's very easy to, uh, mem to do a membership and join that channel and help that channel. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. Actually, I would like to ask you guys if I should do it or not. I already have some ideas. I did create my little badges. I did create my little perks, but I don't know if I want to do it. You tell me, would you like to, to do a, would you like to follow me and do, become a member and pay a little amount each month, a small fee each month to help the channel grow? I don't know. You can say no, you can say I don't care, but I would appreciate great your, your comments here in the comment section. Okay, let's talk about uploading a video to YouTube. What happens? What are the issues? Well, first of all, there's been a huge dramatic change in the last year. There have been two, act, two main points where things change dramatically. First of all, all the copyright problems, issues connected to Europe. So whoever is based in the US or other places around the world, but not in Europe, doesn't know anything about this. So we have great restrictions coming in that from that direction. Plus recently also there's from the US instead, which obviously invested everyone, all creators, is the COPPA, the COPPA um, law, where practically you must declare when something is dedicated, when content, video, whatever it is. <clears throat> you can do only, only audio also on YouTube for children. That's, that has to be filtered somehow. That has to be un scrutinized. That's why uh, a lot of creators that were thinking or starting to do things, contents for children, really got an abrupt a halt there and changed completely direction because it is difficult to satisfy. Fortunately, my channel has nothing to do with children. Apart from that, what else is important in uploading uh, videos to YouTube. What is the problems with the algorithm, etc.? Well, well, we'll we'll take a look in a while uh, in detail what this means. But it is difficult. I just wanted to to underline this. It's really difficult to follow YouTube on this, and a lot of people uh, do this as a job. Now, I have my own job, and I work. And I have my family, so this is just my passion, and that's why maybe I'm doing my content in a different way. But a lot of people point everything all in, as they say in poker, uh, on this type of work, of, of job, of career. And when YouTube changes the algorithm, when YouTube changes the rules, it is dramatic sometimes. I mean, it's really a big problem for a lot of creators. So think about this. It's Keep it in mind that it's not that simple. It's not that easy. It's not just uploading a video and we're done. Nope. There's a lot of things you have to control, check, and follow. And it changes every once in a while. So you're never oh, relaxed. In fact, I had to change a few of my old videos because YouTube blocked them. In fact, I wanted to talk about copyright and music. 
Now, this is another little dirty secret out there that a lot of people are not telling because I see a lot of videos where people say, especially the ones on hi-fi, oh, I can't let, I can't put a track of this record. I can't let you hear anything on. Oh, too bad, copyright issues. It's true, especially now. But in the past, and I would say until seven or eight months ago, you could put 15 seconds of anything on YouTube, on a YouTube video. Now, unfortunately, you can't. Who uploaded videos in the past? It's okay, mostly. Although a, a few tracks do bring to the blocking of your video sometimes. It, it, it just happened to me, in fact. But in general, I wanted to say that you can put music on your uh, videos. You can test it. You can upload a dummy video on another account, very short, and see if that, um, that song will be uh, somehow blocked by YouTube and the, the connected video or you can just ch check it in the in the music library if it has some problems in publishing that type of music but it, it, not everything is in that library. In any case there are solutions to check that. I for example enjoy doing music reviews of on my channel and I like to play a small portion of that album just to, to show you to, to somehow communicate better what I'm talking about and feel that groove together with you. And a lot of channels don't do that. Why? Because they want to monetize completely their video. Because what happens if you do not get blocked? Simply, you, you, you can still let the video out and about on YouTube, but all the revenue, the monetization goes to the guys who did the songs, which is correct. 100%, no problem. Actually, they could decide to split half 50-50 between the creator and them. That never happens. So if you put music, you can do it. Uh, very, very rarely. I got blocked on Miles Davis, I think, on BB King. And I had to co completely remove that part of the video, unfortunately, to put it back online. So it does happen. Okay, you can be blocked, but it's very rare. Mostly, in most cases, you just leave it on the video and the monetization is going to go to someone else. I don't care. I want to put a cool video outside. But not all people do that. And they just blame everything on YouTube on the copyright issues. I don't think that's fair. But I did want to mention this. Okay, let's, let's go ahead. Okay, now I want to discuss about the life expectation of a video. When you publish a new video, what happens in the first hour, the first hour, and in a minor degree, the first three hours is paramount. You decide the future of that video. So if you see one of my videos, make sure to click on it. Maybe you can watch it afterwards, but click on it or other creators you enjoy. Click on it immediately. And put a thumbs up if you like it, obviously. If you like the title, the concept at least, then you can change it. So at that point, YouTube will see that there's interest for that video and it will keep promoting it. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a good feedback from the people after, I would say, five hours, I think, or six hours, something like that, it puts it away and puts something else out and about in the... Uh, in the in the suggested recommended videos so remember that especially if you want to help your best your favorite creator click on it put a thumbs up watch a little bit you can watch it afterwards but if you don't do it immediately unfortunately that video is gonna be wiped away like for example just recently I uploaded a vinyl 101 video which I think it's a very cool video there's a lot of information the problem is that it's very long, so a lot of people decided not to watch it immediately or to just to watch a little bit uh, after a while. So it immediately went down and wasn't suggested anymore. But I've seen that who watched it did really enjoy it. Even people who already watched other videos from me, from my channel, and knew, I would say, 50% of it. So it's just an example. So how a high quality, a good quality content can unfortunately be hidden by YouTube if it doesn't have a reaction from the public in the immediate first hours.
So remember that the key, I would say the two key factors in your hand to help your creator, your favorite creator or your, your channel or something that you like on YouTube are mainly two. Interaction, which means comments, thumbs up or even thumbs down if you don't like it, wherever it is. But any kind of interaction and especially sharing the video. If you do these two things, you're going to ensure a long life to that channel into that video. And on the contrary, if you completely ignore that, obviously you're going to doom that video and doom that channel. So you have the power, guys. Remember that. Let's proceed. Okay, I just wanted to share uh, a few details on the analytics. I don't know if you guys know how is a YouTube creator channel analytics structured. I mean, it's amazing. I don't think even the CEO of Google, in, in, when he presents something, a new project has so many features. I know YouTube is Google, but you know what I mean. Uh, there's hundreds and very detailed uh, pieces of information explaining everything, every single part of who's watching it, when, uh, how long, uh, the age, and I mean, every kind of information you can think of, obviously in respect to that uh, copyright and also the um, privacy policy that is very big in Europe. I forgot to say that also the privacy policy. We don't want that in, in Europe. We're, we're very fond of that. We don't want social media picking up and that I think that is correct, but it's a little too strict in personal information when we go on social media. In any case, there's a lot of information collected, uh, but it's all obviously regular and legal, but it's very, it's very interesting, I think. And I just wanted to share a few of these details of my channel, just a few, I mean, otherwise it's boring. But it's important that you know how much people are studying behind every video, behind every channel, to see what's going wrong and what's going right and trying to emulate or, redu or reduce those aspects. It's very interesting, I think, almost as a marketing uh, department for a specific brand. And sometimes, in fact, a natural way of presenting a channel sometimes becomes a little too uh, fixed up uh, cosmetically and structurally the production becomes a little too fancy, I think, and polished, which kills a little bit of that simpleness, I would say, and directness of a video of a V blog, uh, of a video blog like this, which that's the cool part, I think, of YouTube. In any case, let's take a look. For example, uh, according to my lifespan on my channel, I have 98% watchers are male. Well, no surprise there. We know that Girls don't like that much hi-fi. And sometimes I've been down to zero. Now in the, the, the total lifespan of my channel, I have 2% females. Well, thank you girls for watching every once in a while my channel. The main public is the sector is mainly embraced in the 35 to 64 years, uh, years old of people watching my channel. So who's below that and above that watches it much less, which it, it is normal. And mainly around the 40s, 50s and 60s, I would say, are concentrated my subscribers. And you know that because you're watching me right now. The main countries, obviously United States, but also UK, Canada, the Netherlands, Australia, and things like that. So thank you all from all those these places and many, many more, obviously the whole world, but these are the main ones who have been watching me. The best videos, the, the ones with more visualizations, uh, interactions, uh, and all the different factors analyzed by Google are the dark side of the moon, which I'll put a direct link here if you haven't seen it, the, the, the test, the analog and digital test. As I said before, the secrets of high-end cables, uh, the room tour, my first one, remember I did a, a second one, check also the other one, that other one. And uh, I just want to mention one, one last one, the four track reel to reel video, strangely, in, instead of the two track, probably because the four track is a more popular format. Okay, I just want to say one more thing 
as you know, I entitled my channel Anna Dialogue, which means analog dialogue recomposed. Why is that? Because I do enjoy and I do want to, this to be a dialogue between me and you guys. And the main possibility is doing uh, comments, writing down comments and answering comments. I just want to say that a lot of times, I don't know why, I also have an application, a YouTube application, which delivers me the comments, which give me, gives me analytics and things like that. But I don't know why it doesn't give me all the comments. So a lot of times, if I don't answer, please don't get angry or annoyed. Because in most cases, I did not see that reply. Or that, that, that first comment or the reply to one of my comments, to one of my uh, first replies, etc. I mean, if I'm not there anymore, maybe I was not notified from that. So I just wanted to share this because maybe sometimes you wrote me and... You were expecting some, some kind of feedback and nothing happened. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Instead, on Facebook and the other social media, that's a little too personal. I'm going to start to lower a little bit down. I'm starting to have a little too many emails, a little too many um, private messages there. So please focus your attention on the channel and write your comments there. So even other people can benefit from, from your questions, from your, your ideas and things like that. Okay. And hopefully, soon or later, even though I live in Italy, as you know, I'm mainly Italian, uh, it is difficult, and that's why I never did anything up until now, I would like to do um, some live sessions. I hope if, you're, if you think that's a good idea, write this in the, in the comments, please. And sooner or later, I will do that. We'll, we'll do a Q&A or something like that, just to chit-chat a little bit and have a more direct dialogue. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this backstage if you have more questions on the YouTube creator's life, please write them in the, in the comments and I will be glad to answer. In any case, remember guys, music is born analog. Ciao ragazzi! Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.